Hello and welcome to this My Theme Shop video tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the MyWP Backup plugin, which is the best way to protect your data and your website in the event of adverse server events, data corruption, hacking, and more. It's a great backup plugin and MyWP Backup is free to use. Now, the first thing to do is to install the plugin. And to do this, you want to head over to your WordPress dashboard and then go to plugins and then click add new. Now you just need to do a search here for my WP backup and hit return. And then you're going to find my WP backup by my theme shop is available. And you just need to click install now. WordPress is going to download that onto your site. And all you need to do now is click activate plugin. You'll then see you've got an additional menu added on the left hand side. And if you click on that, this is going to take you to the dashboard of the my WP backup plugin. And here you'll see you can take a quick tour just by pressing that button and that will show you around the plugin. But in this video, we're just going to get straight to it. You have two options here, perform a backup or restore from a backup. I've not created any backups yet. So I want to click perform a backup in order to set up my first backup here. This takes us to the jobs page and here I can add new in order to add a new backup. So I might wish to add a weekly backup, for example. So I can choose a title. Um, this is typically a description, so daily or weekly is suggested. I can then choose the file name and whether to have um, different compression types. Zip is fine for me. If you've got a particularly large site, you might want to split the backup into smaller volumes. Um, so for example, you might want to split the backup into 100 megabyte volumes. And you can do that just by inputting a number there and ticking that box. I don't need that feature, so I'll just leave it unticked. Next up, I've got content, and here I can choose what is included in the backup. Now the backup files option here is going to take a backup of all your WordPress files, including themes and plugins. And then the upload directory is going to choose whether you've got images and other media you've uploaded included in the backup. So you can just tick or untick those. And you can also choose to exclude certain file types. So here you can use file extensions to exclude certain types of files. So I'll just show you what that might look like if I wanted to exclude a JPEG. You want to um, do a double star and then forward slash and then another star to indicate um, the first two are any URL and then this is indicating any file name. And if I just put .jpeg in there um, then doing that would exclude all JPEG files and you just need to add each one on a new line. These default ones are files which are technical files that you probably won't need. And you can click test once you have added in the file URLs there. You can choose whether to include the database in your backup and whether to include table filters. And then uh, ticking that will give the option to exclude specific table filters that things such as plugins might have added there. Safest to include those though, so you can just leave that unticked. Next up, you need to choose how often the schedule is run. And on the free version of my WP backup, you're only going to be able to run these manually. If you want to have the backup going more frequently, then you will need the pro version of my WP backup, which is available from mythemeshop.com. You can also choose where you want the backup to go, the destination of the backup. By default, this is going to uh, save the backup straight onto your server. So if you leave these blank, then my WP backup is just going to export a backup onto your server. But you see you have three options. You can choose FTP. You'd want to do this if you wanted to upload the backup onto a different site. And you can just add in the details there. You can choose Dropbox and you just need to click generate access token in order to be taken to dropbox.com in order to connect my WP backup to your Dropbox. And you also have Google Drive. So again, you just need to click generate access token to be taken to Google Drive in order to connect my WP backup to Google Drive. So with these two, Dropbox and Google Drive, you've got the option to export your backup onto an external cloud service. You can connect the plugin to multiple backup destinations just by holding down control and then clicking on multiple ones there. So um, you can just tick or untick those in order to choose what you want. 
Leaving those blank, as I mentioned, um, it's just going to leave it to export onto your server. Now in the pro version of the plugin, you've got some additional destinations available, including Amazon S3, MS Azure Cloud Storage, Amazon Glacier, Rackspace Cloud Files, and OneDrive as well. And the final option is whether to have a report of when the backup is done. So you can either have this off or have one sending by email. And you'll see um, this will just send an automatic email saying that your backup is finished. And you can choose to attach a log file if you'd like. And you can choose whether to send this using the default WordPress mail sending system. Or if you want to add specific email details for your email server, you can do that here. I'm going to turn off reporters there. Now, once again, in the pro version of the plugin, you've got some additional reporters available, including SMS, a push notification, HipChat, and Slack as well. So that's in the pro version of the plugin. Once you're done, you can save those changes and you'll see my weekly backup has been created. So with the free version of my WP backup, these won't run automatically. You need to run them yourself. And in order to do that, you just need to click run now once you've hovered over there. I will then confirm. I can now start my backup. And you're going to see that my WP backup is going to run that there. And once that's finished, you're going to get a notification. So mine is finished and that only took 0.2 seconds. Obviously, that's going to change depending on the size of your site. So if you head back to the dashboard of my WP backup, you'll see on the right hand side, you can also restore from a backup. You just need to hover over a backup that's been created. So I can see this was the backup I created one minute ago and it is a full backup. And I can then re either review the log, list the files included just to check what's in there. And then when I'm ready, I can click restore. So I'm confirming I want to restore the backup from the local folder on my um, web server. And I just need to click start in order to do that. And then my WP backup is going to restore that backup for me and restore the database. And you'll see how quick and easy that was to restore that backup using my WP backup. Finally, if you head to settings, you'll just see you've got a couple of extra options here. You can uh, set the time limit in seconds so the job is able to run before it gets terminated. Um, so you can set this to naught to disable it or leave the default. You can also set the maximum upload retries, the backup directory, and you can also export your settings here just by copying that or clicking that file to download and import the settings there either by pasting the code or uploading the file you would have downloaded from the export. So that's all there is to it. My WP Backup is a brilliant plugin, free, easy to use. Um, if you want automatic updates, if you want automatic backups, then check out My WP Backup Pro which is available from mythemeshop.com. But it's always important to have a backup and I hope this plugin comes in useful for you. If you have any queries, then head over to community.mythemeshop.com and our support team will be more than happy to help. And thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.